Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out the YT-2400 expansion. It's a Wave 5 ship. Again, this is the Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures game. Uh, for those of you that haven't heard of this before, um, it was featured in a game called Shadows of the Empire for the N64. I haven't played it in a very long time, obviously, but um, I have fond memories of it. In that game, you played as Dash Rendar, and uh, the uh, expansion is themed appropriately. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at the ship and what cards came with it. Okay, so here's a quick look at some of the components. I didn't include the tokens because they tend to be redundant. Um, a lot of the tokens that usually come with expansions like this reflect the ship class in question and complement whatever scenarios come with the expansion. But here is a quick look at the model itself. Let's go ahead and focus in on this so you can see it. And as you can see, it's pretty detailed. Again, it looks like the Millennium Falcon a little bit. But you can see some obvious differences here. Now, like the Millennium Falcon, it has a 360-degree firing arc, though there is a uh, secondary arc right here for, say, concussion missiles or whatever the case may be. Now, normally I'd show you the maneuver dial itself, but um, it's being finicky with me. Sometimes the... Uh, the little connectors here will pop out for no reason. These are the only complaints that I have about the Star Wars X-Wing game as a whole. Like some of these expansions, these, as you can see, it's already falling apart and I didn't even do anything. I just picked it up. But yeah, trying to jam these two connectors together like this um, won't always work. And throughout the game, these will just come apart at the seam. So instead, I'm going to show you what's in this little um, mini guide here that came with the expansion. As you can see, it's pretty damn maneuverable. One, two, three, it can do hard bangs, slight turns, go straight ahead. It can even do a 4K turn, which is pretty powerful. On to the cards themselves. Dash Rendar and the YT-2400. Pilot skill 7, and across the board we've got 2 and 2 as far as attack and agility go. Down here we've got 5 and 5 in terms of hull value and shields. Focus, target lock, barrel roll, action. Now that is a new concept to this. This is a large ship but the ship can actually perform a barrel roll. Now, um, it's actually shown down here in the lower left-hand corner of this little mini guide. Basically, you'll use the one template, put the long side flat against the base, and then move it like so, as shown here in this illustration. But getting back to this, uh, this deck of cards here, the uh, Dash Rendar YT-2400 card, you may ignore obstacles during the activation phase and when performing action. So that's actually pretty powerful. Um, that'll actually go hand in hand with another upgrade card, which I'll show you in a minute. But note that this is a unique uh, pilot, so you cannot use this card again. Should you decide to use this pilot, you will not be able to use the upgrade card that's found in the upgrade deck. And I'll explain that in a little bit. But again, focus, target lock, barrel roll. Got some upgrades down here. Total cost of 36 points. Further in, we've got Lebo, Pilot Skill 5, same stats. When you are dealt a face-up damage card, draw one additional damage card, choose one to resolve, and discard the other one. So, getting a critical hit may not be so bad. You can choose between two of them instead of drawing whatever comes up. Again, Focus, Target Lock, Barrel Roll, 34 points. Eden Vril, um, 2255 again. When performing a primary weapon attack against a stressed ship, roll one additional attack die. I, I, that would be pretty powerful in my opinion, especially if you equip this particular ship with, say, Tactician or something like that. Focus, target lock, barrel roll, and a total cost of 32 points. Finally, you've got this basic run-of-the-mill Wild Space Fringer. Uh, there's no special abilities here and a cost of 30 points. On to the upgrade cards. You've got Lone Wolf here. When attacking or defending, if there are no friendly ships at range 1 to 2, you may re-roll one of your blank results as an upgrade cost of 2. So while a lot of cards will encourage you to stay in formation, um, this one will actually encourage you to get away from your other ships, which is pretty interesting. Stay on target. When you reveal a maneuver, you may rotate your dial to another maneuver with the same speed. Treat that maneuver as a red maneuver. Upgrade cost of two. Definitely suited to higher pilot skills uh, because the lower skills move first. So you have a chance to sort of see what they're going to do and then rotate your dial accordingly based, with, based on this stay on target card. Dash Rendar. Now, I was saying something before about uh, this Dash Rendar card uh, being somewhat similar to this. Now, whenever you overlap an obstacle in this game as a whole, you are affected in both the activation and the combat phase. This card will give you a buff during the activation phase. Basically, whenever you land, land or run through an obstacle, um, you cannot take an action. This particular 
uh, ability here will negate that. Whereas this card, you may perform attacks while overlapping an obstacle. Your attacks cannot be obstructed. Upgrade cost of two. So this particular card will uh, benefit you during the combat phase. So it, you can either choose one or the other. You can't have both. Otherwise, that would be pretty uh, OP. Gunner, uh, we've seen this card before. After you perform an attack that does not hit, you may immediately perform a primary weapon attack. You cannot perform another attack this round. Upgrade cost of five. Lando Calrissian. Rebel only. As an action, roll two defense dice. For each focus action, or focus result, assign one focus token to your ship. For each evade result, assign one evade token to your ship. Not too bad. As an upgrade cost of three. Little luck required there. Lebo. Action. Perform a free boost action. Then receive one ion token. Has an upgrade cost of two. Mercenary Copilot, we've seen that. When attacking at range 3, you may change one of your hit results to a crit result. Upgrade cost of 2. Proton Rockets as an attack. Focus, mind you. It has a uh, attack value of 2, range 1. Discard this card to perform this attack. You may roll additional attack dice equal to your agility value to a maximum of 3 additional dice. Upgrade cost of 3. I think I saw that in the Rebel Aces, but I can't be sure. Heavy Laser Cannon, we've seen that one. Uh, attack value 4, range 2 to 3, attack 1 ship. Immediately after rolling your attack dice, you must change all of your crits to hit results. Upgrade cost of 7. Countermeasures, this is new, large ship only modification. At the start of the combat phase, you may discard this card to increase your agility value by 1 until the end of the round. Then you may remove 1 enemy target lock from your ship. Upgrade cost of 3. Another countermeasure card there. Experimental interface modification. Once per round, after you perform an action, you may perform one free action from an equipped upgrade card with the action header. Then receive one stress token. Upgrade cost of three. And finally, the outrider title. Uh, while you have a heavy weapon upgrade card equipped, you cannot perform primary weapon attacks. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you may perform uh, heavy weapon, secondary weapon attacks against ships outside your firing arc. So basically, you can equip um, this heavy laser cannon, and you can fire that, fire that in a 360 degree firing arc. Um, the downside is you'll have to observe that particular card's effect. You'll have to change all crits to hit. But you can use four attack dice in a 360 degree firing arc. However, you have to observe the range too on that card. It was like uh, two to three, I think it was. So if you happen to get stuck at range 1, uh, you won't be able to fire at the enemy ship at all. So keep that in the back of your mind um, whenever you equip this Outrider title. And there you have it, a very brief look at the YT-2400 expansion. I didn't cover everything in the box, but I did focus on the highlights here. So hopefully this will give you an idea of what you're in for should you pick this up. It does include a few obstacle tokens that are used for the scenario. Um, so, in theory, you could use that in place of the asteroids if you wanted to. It's sort of just like ship debris or whatever. But anyway, um, yeah, not a bad expansion. Introduces some new, uh, new cards and the whole barrel roll thing with a large ship. That's definitely something new. This game continues to surprise me. I mean, you've got cloaking ships now with the TIE Phantom, and now you've got this large ship that can barrel roll, which is pretty darn cool. So yeah, um, if you want to see the full review of the game itself, you can do so www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you can keep up to date on any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.